My name's Matt Walpole. I'm an electrician with Foundations Up Construction, the building arm of the DIY Doctor website. And over the next series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to carry out a number of different electrical jobs in your house, the jobs that you're allowed to carry out, the tools that you'll need to use, and a number of great products on the market that will help make life easier for you. Before we carry out any electrical work in the home, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we isolate the power for the respective circuit that we're working on. So we need to go to our fuse box or our consumer unit and turn off the appropriate breaker. What's also very important is once you've isolated the circuit in question, is to ensure that you lock it out using a bespoke lockout kit. Um, this is to ensure that nobody else can come behind you while you're working on the circuit and actually turn the power back on, causing a potential risk. Check out the DIY Doctor website for our video on how to use a basic lockout kit. As an electrician, I'm always getting asked to put lights in houses and to move lights particularly from one place to another in the house. Um, and generally, that will involve using some kind of junction box or connector to extend the existing circuit or to divert part of the circuit to a new part or a new place in the house. And if you've ever used junction boxes or even push fit connectors, you'll be aware that it can be quite a fiddly process, it can be quite time consuming, um, and we all know that in electrics, if you're doing it professionally, time is money. And also, if it's difficult and fiddly for somebody carrying out DIY, that can be a bit of a problem. And that's where this fantastic product by a company called Quickwire comes in. And the clue is very much in the name. There are two types, uh, color-coded grey and white respectively, and we'll talk about what the two types are for later on. So both types of connector block are rated up to 16 amps and just to show you some of the basic features um, of the junction box firstly on the end you've got the cable entry points i.e. the place in which you're going to insert the cable and that is connected to a movable section which is the clamp that is the bit that locks the cable in and we'll talk more about that uh, a bit later on. As you turn it round there is a window. The window will show you um, how much cable is inside the junction box when you come to clamp it so that you know you've got enough and you know you're going to make a good uh, positive connection and then there is also the cable removal tool so that if you clamp the cable in and you find you need to remove it there is a simple and effective method to do that and again we'll show you a bit more about that later on first of all we're going to demonstrate the grey model which is the splitter uh, model and it is in essence a four-way junction box so there are four individual places uh, where you can terminate cable and join cable together and it's very very clever because you quite simply need to put the cable in and the uh, each end and the box does the magic for you. Now one of the things that you have to do when using this quick wire, uh, quick wire product is to ensure that your cable is stripped back um, a certain way. You have to strip back the outer sheathing and the internal insulation of the cores. The, the outer insulation needs to go back between 20 and 22 millimeters and the internal insulation between 50 and 17 millimeters. Now that may sound quite complicated and if um, you've been doing this a long while you may be very comfortable with a Stanley knife or some wire strippers and you may be able to estimate that distance very easily. However, for most of us normal mortals it's not something that is necessarily very easy. Um, but Quickwire have produced a very, very handy tool and there is a set of flat cable wire strippers and honestly, these are so easy to use, it feels like cheating. They have also very helpfully marked 22 millimeters on uh, the place in which you place the cable for stripping so that you know exactly how much cable that you're stripping off and it is so easy to use. You simply take the end of your cable, we've got uh, a piece of one mil twin and earth, you place it in, 
you ensure that it is lined up with the 22 millimeter point and you simply, I'm right handed, squeeze the handles together, remove and it takes exactly 22 millimeters of insulation off, uh, of sheathing off. Now, for the internal cores, it's exactly the same. Give yourself a couple of mil, insert the cable, squeeze the handles together and your internal cores are stripped back perfectly for use with the quick wire box. It's then a simple case of placing the cable in the cable entry points, ensuring that live is lined up with live, earth with earth, and neutral with neutral, and placing them in the hole and locking the clamp down. The other point to note is that you do not need to sleeve the earth with green and yellow sleeving. One of the things, that, as, as all electricians know, that takes the time is cutting and sleeving earth. However, with this product, because none of it is exposed and it's double insulated, you can simply press the cable in, push it in, and lock the cable in place. And you can do that up to four times on each junction box. Now, if you're in a position where you've terminated that cable in the junction box and you realize you need to reroute it, or you realize you need to take it out for whatever reason, it will be very, very difficult to pull that out manually. However, again, Quickwire have come up with a very sensible and very easy to use cable removing tool. And it is simply something uh, that help, that uh, releases the clamp and allows the wire to, uh, to be taken out. It's shaped, funnily enough, to the same profile as the outside of the junction box, and it sits very snugly between two nipples, or nodules, if you prefer. And quite simply, you place the removal tool over the top of the junction box, you line up the prongs either side with the clamp, press the two sides in and push with your finger or thumb and as you can see it releases the cable and it's removed undamaged and ready to use again should you want to. It's so simple it feels like cheating. Right, so you join us in the DIY Doctor packing room, which we've just recently uh, converted and we're just finishing off decking it out. Um, and what we're doing today is we are trying to put a light in this office room next door. So what I've done is we've took the ceiling down and we've removed the insulation to expose uh, the cables of the lighting circuit underneath. I've identified uh, the lighting loop, i.e. the cable that is coming from the fuse board and taking power around the lighting circuit and all around this downstairs area. And having turned the power off and safely isolated at the consumer unit, I have cut the uh, cable in half to expose the cores because this is the cable that we want to create the junction with or in. And I have pulled through a new cable from the office next door that it that we're, that uh, is going to take the power into the new room and to connect the two together i'm going to use the gray quick wire junction box and i'm going to show you how straightforward and easy it is you'll notice apart from those cutters that i use to cut through the cable i haven't got any other tools on me besides the quick wire flat cable strippers um, and it is as easy as the demonstration showed earlier on so firstly I've identified uh, my loop cables ie the cables carrying uh, the current around the circuit and I'll use the quick wire uh, wire cutters to prepare the cables ready for insertion So that's the loop prepared and then I will take my quick wire box, ensure that the cables are orientated um, with the box itself 
live neutral earth. There's no requirement to splay the cables particularly. You simply place in the cable insertion point. You check the window on the sides to ensure you've got enough cable and simply press and lock the cable into place. And we do that with both parts of the loop. And then the second cable, just ensure that the cables are ready to go. Place again into the cable clamp and lock it in. And just give the cables a tug to ensure that um, they fit it in. So that is the loop cable joined back together and ready for the additional cable to be inserted to create the junction. So as I've said, we've got the cable here ready and then we repeat the process. We use the, we use the quick wire wire cutters, the wire strippers to remove the outer sleeve and the inner insulation. And again, we simply repeat the process. We line up live earth and neutral in the cable entry point. We check the window to make sure that there's enough cable inside, which there is. We then press and secure the cable into place. And with a firm tug, we ensure that everything is secure. And that is a basic junction using the quick wire junction box created. And that can be left uh, secured to the joist or left securely uh, under the floor um, for future use. Right, so we're now inside the office where we want to put the new light. And you will see in front of me, we've got a couple of cables. The first, the long one, is the cable that we've pulled through and connected outside in the quick wire splitter box. And the second cable here is one that I've pulled through already that goes down to our switch that we're gonna to use to switch the light on and off. And uh, check out the DIY Doctor website for videos on how to wire a switch. But for now, we're gonna assume that that's wired correctly, which it is, because I did it. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to connect in to um, a basic ceiling rose. Now, one of the things that is equally time consuming and difficult sometimes for people is wiring the ceiling rose correctly. And just like with the junction box or the splitter box, quick wire have come up with another fantastic product and this is where the white version comes in. The white version is known as the switch and load box and it looks to all intents and purposes exactly the same as the grey one and it is to look at however there are some subtle differences between how the connections work inside. This thing does exactly what a ceiling rose does in the, uh, with the same quick easy methodology. You have firstly on the top two, two uh, cable entry points for power, i.e. For, uh, for the permanent live to come in, or the lighting loop as it's commonly known, and to, go, and to go out. At the other end, there is a, there is a, uh, a clamp specifically for the switch cable. And again, it is labeled switch. So you know uh, that that is where your switch cable needs to terminate. And on the back, there is one labelled load. That is the bit that will go down eventually to the light that you're trying to connect in. And because everything is labelled and it's so straightforward, it is easy to fit um, and very difficult to get muddled up. And I shall show you now how this works. Firstly, let's connect in our switch. So we take the switch cable, we uh, strip the wire back in line with uh, how we've just done it before. Right, so we're now in a position where we've got the power, the permanent source of power connected and the switch cable. And we now need to um, connect our light and the light connects in exactly the same way. Whether you're finishing it with a ceiling rose or any other type of aftermarket light, the method is exactly the same. You simply need an, another length of 
twin and earth cable, which you can cut from the drum, which we've done. And it, it's, and it's, it inserts into the load section in exactly the same way. The cable is stripped accordingly and is inserted this time in the terminal that says load, because that is the load on the circuit, i.e. the light itself. Insert, check the window, push and lock into place. Gentle tug test to ensure that uh, the cable is securely terminated. Okay, so we've now got the split and load box connected. We've got power, permanent source of power coming in from the junction box that we did next door. We've got the switch cable and we've got our cable that we're going to connect to our light. Now in this case, we're just using um, a simple pendant um, for this particular room, but where the quick wire products come into their own particularly is when you're being asked to replace a light with these more modern aftermarket lights. Now anyone that's tried to do this before will know that there is a very small amount of space for all of these connections to go and so now very often the connections are being pushed up into the ceiling using um, basic connector blocks which whilst they're effective are not necessarily ideal to be left under um, or in a, in, a, in a void between uh, a ceiling and the floor above. However the quick wire product is fantastic because the slim sort of cylindrical shape fits very neatly through a very very small hole the type of hole that will easily be obscured by the surround of any light that you're going to put over the top um, and this will actually fit through a 32 uh, millimeter diameter hole we've drilled a 38 in this particular case just to show you uh, a bit more clearly but once your connections are made you can very simply push that safely into the void between the ceiling and the floor so that, uh, so that it is safe and also when required you can pull it back down for further maintenance and so now that the junction box is safely uh, tucked away in the uh, ceiling void the load cable is ready to connect our light um, and as I said in this case we're just going to use a simple pendant which we will secure to the ceiling like so covering uh, the hole that was created to hide the junction box and connecting in uh, to the uh, pendant flex in the normal way. And there are a number of videos on the DIY Doctor website that will show you how to connect up a pendant light. Okay, so we fitted our light, which in this case is just a basic pendant, connected it up. Um, as is normal to do, live to live, neutral to neutral, and earth to earth. Um, and we just pop the cover back on, and that's the light end of the installation now complete. Okay, so now that the light is connected in the office room, we now need to turn the power back on so we can test the circuit. We can try the light at the switch.